Hi, Brian from Pittsburgh Power again. I haven't talked to you for a while. Uh, I've got a truck in here. Interesting little couple little problems. This truck actually uh, only has 140,000 miles on a rebuild. We did not do this truck here. Um, but a couple of things that I want to make you aware of is that um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but that's not the proper way you want to air, fil air filter your air for your air compressor. Um, they're designed to have some of the boost incorporated into them. That's why they pick up the air off of the intake. You want to have air filtered air. Uh, this is, as you can see, this it's quite dirty and uh, it's, it's just not appropriate way to do this. This hose is really soft. So you want to make sure you get the right amount of air into your air compressor. Um, the other thing that happened in this truck, the customer, like I said, he had this rebuild 140,000 miles ago. Uh, did not do a bull gear at that time. Uh, had his overhead set come out and his truck was running a little odd. Uh, took it back, they reset his overhead. Um, got going down the road and it made a heck of a racket. And he thought something, because he hadn't had his, his uh, bull gear replaced, that something came apart in the front end. Uh, we pulled off the accessory drive on the other side, checked his bull gear, checked the teeth, checked for play in the bull gear. Everything seemed to be fine. So the next step was to pull the valve cover. When we pulled the valve cover, we found that one of the ceramic rollers was broken in half completely on uh, number two intake right here. It didn't do as much damage to the cam as I thought it would, uh, being that the guy drove the truck for another 50 miles after, the, uh, after he heard noise. Uh, but after I got to speaking with him a little bit, he said he just had his overhead set, so I got thinking, well, maybe something happened and we got a bent valve. Uh, sure, sure as heck we do. If you see here, if I lay this straight edge across the top of this, you can see I probably have a quarter inch difference. These are all pretty close together. If you, if you keep going down the line and checking them, you know, they're usually all pretty close. This one here is low, so you know something's going on in there. I have some pictures later. I don't know if you'll be able to, to, to see that you can actually see in through the port that the valve is actually bent. Here's the roller on number two that broke. You can see that thing sheared completely in half. Uh, I don't know if other people out there have seen that, but I, that's the first one of those I've seen like that. I don't know what would cause that to fail. As you can see, the rollers themselves, they all look fine. Uh, I don't know if there was any kind of shock uh, that could have been incorporated in there whenever that the, um, I'm not sure what happened first yet. I need to get in, get the head off and check. Uh, see if I think it was that the uh, valve hit the piston first or the valve hit the piston after this broke. Um, I thought possibly that the valve could have hit the piston and that could have caused a shock back through this because that cam is going to keep on turning. And that's why I'm really surprised that the cam lobe isn't wiped completely off of the camshaft. It's just starting to uh, peel the metal back off of it. Okay, as you can see here, um, this is a vibration dampener that Bruce is always speaking of. Uh, it takes up the tor torsional, torsional shock in the engine, all right? And as you can see, this was rebuilt 140,000 miles ago. That was not replaced. That's a commonly skipped part during a rebuild. So that part could have unlimited amount of miles on it. They really don't, there's nowhere that Detroit specifies a limitations for replacement mileage, but Cummins does and, and they noticed it at 500,000 miles. So we like to do everything at 500,000 miles. The gel inside of them gets hard after a while. It has to, everything does, you know, nothing lasts forever. Um, and then the parts are unable to move inside. I can get you, uh, we have a couple cutaways I can show you uh, a little bit better about what I'm talking about on that. The, on the torsional damper on the front of your engine, uh, it's a very inexpensive fix or, or protection more than likely from keeping other components from breaking. As that, as that stiffens up inside and it does not work anymore and your parts do not move to pick up the, the torsional stress on the engine, things break. You start breaking camshafts, uh, crankshafts, any of the components up in the front of the engine that are driven by the crankshaft. Uh, that's, that's some of the stuff that will break. 
uh, hoses, replace soft hoses. Uh, make sure you're getting proper air filtration to your engine and to your air compressor. Different things like that, are they're very crucial. Uh, you know, you want to keep everything tidy and neat. It makes your engine last longer and look better. Uh, so that's about all for today. So Brian from Pittsburgh Power, thank you.